So this, my friends, is the new Logitech G Pro X keyboard. I've been patiently waiting for them to release a new TKL lineup inside the Pro series, and this is it. It is really awesome they're bringing out swappable switches into the mainstream, but that's not going to be for everyone, so let's see how competitive the Pro X is right after this. The new Cooler Master Master Mouse 710. Weird name, but damn this thing is good. With an ultra lightweight body at only 53 grams for excellent flick control and aim correction, the ultra weave cable is awesome for wireless like feel, the ambidextrous shape for me personally is super comfortable and I like the shorter body, plus the glide is smooth thanks to white PTFE feet. Enjoy the domination with an excellent optical sensor and despite the funky name, the Cooler Master MM710 is legit. Check it out below. So first I want to say the original G Pro keyboard with Roma G switches is being replaced with a new G Pro keyboard with GX Blue switches for $129. I personally love the Roma G switch, but the proprietary nature of the stem meant no easy keycap swapping, while all the new Pro keyboards use Kale switches with MX stems, so at least that's a positive. The Pro X keyboard, however, is a $20 premium where the switches are not soldered to the board, so you can choose between three switch options. And honestly, not much has changed in terms of form factor from the original, except now you can swap out switches and create custom mechanics layouts for your needs and it's got the same really solid frame with plenty of weight that feels heavy on my desk compared to Razer's latest edition, the Huntsman TE. I have two feelings about them keeping the same shell design. So on one hand, uh, I really like the simplicity of the whole board with a tasteful G logo and a slightly larger forehead with that illumination toggle and a game toggle key that disables your Windows function and copy keys plus whatever other key you want can be set in the software. But I was hoping for a slight redesign design so the keyboard feels a bit new and fresh. You know, the new iPhones came out and everyone has the square cut out for the camera bump. That's how you know that's the new iPhone. Here it feels the same. Even the side pro text just reads Pro instead of Pro X. They kept the same fork style micro USB cable, so no type C on any of their gaming peripherals yet. We still have two levels of angle adjustment with great stability, and unfortunately, the bottom row is not standardized just like on the original, so keycap swapping and custom adventures for this TKL board are limited. And I mention this because the Razer Huntsman TE keyboard has a bottom row standardized, and that is a huge thumbs up for the enthusiast community who are swapping keycaps um, but they're not really catering to the enthusiast community with this keyboard, it seems like. And so the main differences revolve around the switches and the keycaps with the Pro and the Pro X keyboard. So first, gone are the Roma G switches. Bye-bye. Now we have three KL variants, or GX variants, linear, tactile, and clicky. And because the LED on the switch is located at the top instead of centered like on the Roma G, the font on the keycaps has been moved up to accommodate that shine through with secondary characters not being illuminated at all. I also find the font to be a little bit inconsistent, like how bold the main letters and numbers are, while everything around it, like your shift, tab, home, pause, etc., are much smaller and thinner in comparison. The illumination quality, however, is fantastic with great vibrancy and color accurate tones to what you set in the software and easy per key customization. The keycaps, by the way, are nothing fancy. Be ready for visible finger oils after the first hour of use. And now let's talk about these swappable switches. They come in a set of 92 switches, so you get four extra switches just in case, as the TKA layout only needs 88. So in case you like break one of the pins, you still have extra. There's also a keycap slash switch puller in the box as well. I think the intent here, if you buy additional switches set, is not to replace the entire keyboard for something else, but use different switch sets to mix and match uh, to different mechanical layouts on the same keyboard. For example, I love tactile browns for gaming and typing, so I swapped out that entire section in the middle with GX brown switches, while keeping the rest of the keyboard with GX blues, except for my shift control and space bar that I set with GX reds for that linear feel. And so that's really cool, but the downside is the price point. At $49 per switch is set, it means that whatever you buy, you'll always end up having unused switches. Alternatively, you can buy your own set of MX style switches with plate mount instead of PCB mount from companies like Novel Keys, and you're spending about $28 for 100 switches instead of buying them from Logitech for $50, and you have options to buy in fewer quantities to match your layout style because I feel like 92 keys, even though you can replace the entire keyboard, this is not something that I would recommend you doing because why not get the right 
switches for you from the beginning. Now Logitech has of course mentioned that they are using specific tolerances for the frame itself. So if you're using aftermarket switches with the same MX style mount, they might become too loose or they might not be stable or something like that. In my experience with Halo Clears, uh, which are also from Kale by the way, they fit no problem, although they were not as tight inside the frame as GX switches, but they're not like popping out whenever I pull out the keycap. So yeah, and of course they were working just fine with the Pro X. And so this whole swappable nature of mechanical switches is very much appreciated in this gaming sector, but Logitech guys is at a massive price disadvantage for the consumer. You'll be spending way too much money buying them from Logitech and buying the GX switches versus if you were to buy something in lower quantities uh, like other Kale variants and just apply them to the keyboard, they will fit, they'll work no problem, and you'll also be saving money. As for the process of swapping the switches themselves, it is very simple. Remove all the desired keycaps, use the switch puller to unmount the switch carefully, and insert back the desired switch in place, again, very carefully so you don't bend one of those pins. As for my preference between all three GX switches, I don't like the GX Blues because I have to lift my finger entirely off the keycap for it to rebalance back so I can't be really fast with my strokes. GX Browns and GX Reds, both smooth, nice uh, actuation. I do prefer the Browns over the linear style because I've just been used to them. By the way, if you need macros, F1 through F12 keys can be assigned in the software. Just don't forget about the discrete media controls that are activated via the function key. And so the original G Pro keyboard was my favorite. It sat at my desk for three years and there was nothing that could replace it. But uh, the Roma G switch is no more and I welcome the GX introduction of switches into Logitech's lineup because keycap swapping is now a thing and uh, they can recreate Roma G feel with the GX Browns anyway, even though the specifications are slightly different. I welcome the whole mechanical switch customization with the Pro X keyboard, that is awesome, but it would have been the perfect keyboard if they've done two things. One is to reduce the quantity of mechanical switches that you can buy from Logitech instead of getting a whole set of 92, reduce the price and reduce the quantity so you can only get like 20 and replace certain sections of the keyboard, I think that might have been better. And number two, the non-standardized bottom row is just a huge bummer because Razer Huntsman TE, they released it with a standard bottom row and they got so many thumbs up from the enthusiast community and Logitech kind of missed their chance here because the whole customization factor with the switches would have been the perfect complement to customizing the keycaps too. But unfortunately, that's not the case here. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you 